So in this example, we're asked to graph an exponential function. And the exponential function we want to graph is right here, this f of x equals 2 to the x power. And we haven't talked much about graphing yet, but what we can do is think about this in terms of a table of values, right? That's all a graph is. A graph is just something where you say, okay, I have a bunch of x values, and I have f of x evaluated at those points. So for example, if x equals 0, 2 to the 0th power, that's just going to be 1. If x equals 1, 2 to the 1th power equals 2. If x equals 2, 2 to the 2th power equals 4. And we could even go the other direction. Let's say x equals negative 1. 2 to the negative 1th power is 1 half. That's the quotient property of exponents, or the negative exponent property. So we can use these points here. You can go on and on and on like this. But we're going to make a graph uh, plotting some of these points. So let's put some tick marks on here. -da -da -da. OK, and let's see what the shape of this graph looks like. Well, if I take x equal to 0 and plot y equals 1, that's going to be a point right here. And let's make this a little more fancy looking. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got x equals 0, y equals 1. Let's try x equals 1, y equals 2. It's going to be a point over here. x equals 2, y equals 4. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, it's going to be up here or so. You see this curve is starting to bend upwards. And then at x equals negative 1, over here, y only equals 1 half. So that curve is really starting to flatten out. And you might think this is a parabola from the shape over here on the right, but it's not really because these numbers are going to keep getting smaller on the left. Um, 2 to the negative 2 power is 1 quarter. 2 to the negative 3 power is 1 eighth. And so on and so on and so on. They just get smaller and smaller and smaller and they approach 0. So on the left of the graph in an exponential, you have this very flat line that approaches the x-axis but never quite reaches it. On the right, You've got an exponential that, yeah, maybe it does remind you of a parabola, uh, but not quite. It has this increasing function. This is what people generally refer to when they say it's rising exponentially. They mean it's just going up really fast. So that's what the parent function uh, f of x equals 2x looks like, or 2 to the x. Let's talk about another one. Um, and this one I'm going to say f of x equals 2 to the x plus 3. And if you remember about uh, graphing transformations, this plus 3 is a vertical shift, right? It's outside the parentheses. And when I say outside the parentheses, I mean this parentheses right here, right? f of x is 2 to the x, and I'm not changing x. I'm just adding a 3 onto the function. So let's make a graph of this. And we don't have to go through that whole process of making a table of points, um, though I suppose, I suppose we could, just for argument's sake. Let's just put this over here. And remember, f of x is now equal to all these things plus 3. So, um, well, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. So what are these equal to? Um, 4, 5, 7, uh, 3 and a half. If we did negative 2, it would be um, 3 and a quarter, right? If you made a graph of this, it would look a lot like that other graph, except now that flat line or the line approaching the x-axis looks more like this, where it's approaching what's called an asymptote. We've talked about asymptotes before. And that asymptote is going to be located at y equals 3. Basically, this number right here. You can never have anything less than y equals 3, because the lowest the exponent can give you, the lowest this term can give you, is 0. So you're always going to have something plus 3. And then it gets higher and higher and higher as you plot these points over here, just like it did before. So you see what's happened with this vertical shift. It's so easy. We, all we have to do is just move the whole graph up. And the easiest way to see a vertical shift in an exponential is just ask, where is the horizontal asymptote? Wherever that horizontal asymptote is, that's your vertical shift. OK, so let's do another example here. This is a horizontal shift now. Notice what's happened. I don't have that plus 3 outside like I did in that last example, it's not there. It's inside this exponent. Okay, so in other words, it's inside the parentheses, right? 
And when you have a transformation inside a parentheses, you know it is a horizontal transformation. So now, I'm not going to go through the table of points this time. Let's just pretend we have our parent function right here. Okay? See, there's your parent function of f of x. What's happening with a horizontal transformation? Well, which way is it transforming? It's going horizontally. But remember, when you go horizontally, it's always opposite the sign that it looks like. So this is a plus 3. When you go horizontally, that means you're going to the left. So we need to take this function and then transform it by shifting it to the left. So I'm not doing a great job of this, but you see this point right here that crossed the y-axis? It's now over here a little bit. And this point over here is shifted to the left. Everything on here should be shifted to the left in this picture, although it's not perfect. But everything I'm trying to draw is shifted to the left by that shift of 3. Okay, 3 units to the left. So that's how a horizontal shift works for an exponential. And you can think of all these exponentials as just some kind of graphing transformation. Either shifts up or down or left or right, depending on whether your transformation is outside the parentheses, like a k value here, or inside the parentheses, like an h value.